There are many challenges and opportunities today for managers to use OB concepts. Let's take a look at some of them. Responding to globalization is one of the first, and it can be both a challenge and an opportunity, depending on how you look at it. Each one of us is increasingly likely to find ourselves working in a foreign country or with individuals who were born and raised in a different country. This means that many of us will have to learn how to manage other people who may be very different from us, or they may be more similar than what we realize. Being more familiar with other cultures and other ways of living our lives, essentially, helps us be better managers. Management practices then have to be modified to reflect the values of different countries, especially within the country that the organization operates. Take McDonald's, for example. I have been to McDonald's in four different countries, and the experience was quite different in each location. Sure, the M logo looks very similar, regardless of where you are in the world, but the decor, the colors, the smells, the menu varies from country to country. McDonald's had the unique challenge of trying to figure out what each location should look like, feel like, based on local values, norms, and expectations. Managers are often under pressure to keep costs down. One way of doing this is moving jobs to places where labor costs are lower. But this creates an additional challenge. Managers then have to balance the interests of the organization, which is probably trying to make money, and the interests of the people in the local community. Managers have to know how to speak with people. They have to understand the communication and negotiation expectations of the people that they're working with. They have to understand the technological infrastructure, the power structure. There are a whole host of things that have to be considered when quote unquote going global. More and more people are working overseas and there are a great number of employment options available today. It's not as common for everyone to work a full-time job in the office. All of these variations, of course, create challenges for managers. At the same time, they can also create opportunities if managers look at these things as opportunities to grow and improve who they are in their work. Here are some examples of the different employment options available to us today. Many people are what we call employed. They have a job. We also have people who are underemployed, underutilized. They have more talents than they are using. We have people who are re-employed, who maybe quit, retired, were fired, but have been brought back to the organization. We have people who don't have jobs, but want ones. We have entrepreneurs, individuals who are retired. We even have people today who are retired technically by IRS standards, but are still working. Then we have people who are looking for work. We have people who are furloughed, which basically means that they are temporarily not working but they still have a job to go back to. And then we have people who have been unfortunately laid off and no longer have a job. Within some of these categories, we then have different types of employment, full-time, part-time, flex-time, job sharing, where two different people split a job. We have contingent workers, independent contractors, temporary workers, people with reduced hours, and of course, interns who often don't get paid, unfortunately. We also have different places of employment. Pre-pandemic, many people were anchored. 
they worked in an office at a cubicle behind a desk. Other people share their workspace and float from one space to the next. We also have virtual employees. We have flexible employees, people who can work from home or work in the office. We have people who are from the local community. We have people who have moved here from another country, another culture. We have people who are assigned on a short-term basis. We have people who go all over the world and travel from place to place, sort of like a traveling nurse would do. We have international travelers who go from country to country, but they don't live necessarily in those locations. We have visa employees who have applied usually through the national government in order to work in that particular country. We also have union and non-union employees. And in terms of compensation, salary, hourly, overtime, bonuses, contracts, time off, and benefits. I show you this particular image because I want to drive home that point about the complexity of work today. 50 years ago, most people were in that top row. They were employed full-time, working at the office from the local community, making a salary or an hourly wage. Now we have all of these other options which further complicates the job of any manager. This particular challenge is one of the reasons that OB exists, to study it, understand it, and hopefully come up with some solutions that actually work. One of the other challenges is developing and using people skills. Because managers work with people, it makes sense that they need a high level of human skill. They need to be able to talk with people, motivate them, correct their behaviors, resolve conflicts, and so on. However, the training that we receive throughout our lives in the United States is content focused. It's focused on teaching us how to read, write, and math. We don't spend as much time in K through 12 and even in college developing our people skills. This can create a challenge for many entry-level managers. They know a lot, they have degrees, they have experience in the classroom, they are driven, but they are often lacking in their people skills. Another challenge is making ethical decisions and creating an ethical culture where employees also do the right thing. It may seem like there are more ethical scandals today than ever before, but in any society, there are people who quote unquote break the rules. The challenge for OB professionals is how do we identify those people? How do we correct their unethical behavior? An ethical dilemma is a situation in which we have to choose between two options. And the options are not always right and wrong. Sometimes we have to make a choice between two rights. Sometimes we have to make a decision between two wrongs. What I mean by that is sometimes neither option is ideal. Sometimes both options will result in unpleasant consequences that we don't necessarily have a lot of control over. One of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to ethics is that there is some universal list of rights and wrongs and that most people agree. That's not true. In any given situation, any two people might have slightly different approaches to the same ethical dilemma. Many organizations attempt to establish a code of ethics and communicate that code to their employees as a way to prevent unethical behaviors. But a piece of paper, a policy, is not always enough. Sometimes there are other strategies, other things we need to do in order to create a more ethical culture. 
In the last 30 years, more and more employees have started to complain that the line between work and non-work has become so blurred that they now experience a great deal of conflict and stress, enough to say something about it. Part of the reason for this trend is that people are working longer hours than ever before, and communication technology basically allows us to be connected to our work 24-7, 365. People can now work from any location as long as they have internet service and at any time. There are more dual career couples and more single parents than ever before. In a dual career couple, both parents work outside the home, which creates challenges for taking care of the children. And then of course, single parents are by themselves and are solely responsible for taking care of their children. Balancing work and non-work is now one of the most important, significant concerns of employees in the United States. 30 years ago, job security was at the top of the list. Today, it's work-life balance. 